Remember when you were a kid and did something for the first time and it launched a lifelong curiosity? Well, I sure do. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. The first time I ever heard of China, I was a little boy sitting in a Chinese restaurant eating dinner with my parents. I didn't know much about the country, but I sure knew its food was different from mom's. I loved it, and as I grew up, I discovered a lot more about ancient Chinese culture and wisdom. I also discovered that the kitchen is a great place to be introduced to anyone or anything. Chinese cooks seek balance in all things. Pleasing colors, harmonious textures, complementary flavors. A spicy dish is always followed by a bland dish, and simplicity is a prized virtue. In fact, with this simple package of flavor wrappers, I can easily turn a chicken into a bowl of Chinese-inspired broth and dumplings. The first thing I like to do when I'm working with a chicken, any chicken, for any reason, is quite simply to give it a good wash, a good rinse. So I'm going to start by cutting the breasts right off, and I'll use those to stuff the wontons. Simply begin by cutting right along the rib cage. There's actually a guide down there for you. And before you know it, you've got a chicken breast ready for dumpling stuffing. Now, before I throw this carcass in, I will take a second and cut these legs up a bit. There we go. And you really don't need to measure to make a chicken stock. All you really have to do is cover the carcass with water. Ginger, soy sauce, and green onions. With these three simple ingredients, you can aromatize a perfect Chinese-inspired chicken broth. First, take off the root end, and then cut these in half the long way. And by doing that, you basically open it up to lots of flavor absorption. In a sense, the ginger is pepper because it's very, very pungent. And of course, soy sauce would be the salt. And once this comes up to a simmer, I'll simply turn that heat down and let it simmer away which is going to give me lots of time to make some chicken dumplings. Now this is ready to be pureed into a beautiful dumpling stuffing. Now I'll add flavor to this the same way I did to that broth with ginger, green onions, and soy sauce, but this time I'm going to use frozen ginger because this is a great way to get a beautiful gingery powder that'll easily mix into that chicken breast. But that's not all, because there's still a lot of room in there for flavor. Now that aromatic ginger and those pungent green onions could use a little bit of balance, so Chinese oyster sauce, a traditional condiment, is a great choice. Now, a pureed chicken breast is actually very strong. It can suspend a lot of flavor, but adding a touch of cornstarch to it is a great way to improve its texture. Now, this could be used to make egg rolls, spring rolls, wontons, or pot stickers, but since it's headed for a broth, dumplings are the key. These little squares of pasta will insulate that filling in the broth, and it won't get soggy. I'm gonna begin by spreading out Oh, a dozen or so of them. And then start by simply making 12 little piles of stuffing right in the center of each little dumpling wrapper. Okay. 
Next up, you'll need a little bit of water. Then using your finger, simply moisten the dumpling along two sides of the square. Then simply fold it over, tip to tip, then work down one side and down the other. And once you've sealed off the outside, then start working your way towards that center and forming the stuffing into a nice even shape, working out any air pockets that you find too. And if you're feeling fancy, you can always do this. Moisten one of the tips and bring it around to the other tip. Pinch that together, and there it is, a Chinese dumpling. Now this broth is looking good, but somehow I suspect that's only the first step on my flavor journey. China is a very big place but it's easy to find inspiration in its ancient culinary traditions. The flavors might seem unfamiliar at first, but once you get to know them, they're actually quite friendly. My Chinese culinary journey began today with a simple chicken. It's now flavoring an aromatic broth with ginger, green onion, and soya. A chicken breast was pureed into a flavorful dumpling stuffing that's now waiting its turn in the broth. Chinese cooking is all about balance, the yin and the yang. Something savory like an aromatic chicken filling wrapped in a dumpling is often balanced with something sweet, like perhaps a fortune wrapped in a cookie, yes, icing sugar, and flour. And with the oven preheated at 325 degrees, I've got everything I need to make a simple cookie batter. First up, a stick of nice soft butter. Next, three egg whites. A full cup of icing sugar. Chinese star anise. Star anise is actually one of the spices in Chinese five spice. It totally reminds me of the flavors of China. That's gonna add a ton of flavor. Vanilla, of course, is the salt of the pastry kitchen. And this is where the soft room temperature butter is so handy, because it's easy to mix like this. Now before you can put a fortune in a fortune cookie, you have to bake off the fortune cookie. Fortunately, that's easy, because this is the type of cookie that sets into its final shape as soon as it hits the oven. That's easy too, it's just a circle. Now it's a good idea to only bake one of these off at a time when you're first getting started because they bake so quickly and when they come out of the oven you've gotta be prepared to move quickly. But it's also a good idea to have another pan ready to go. You know, I'm feeling adventuresome. I think I'll try and do two of these on the same pan. And that's enough for a family of three. Now it's time to fire Gabe's into the crystal ball. It's also time for my favorite part. I get to pick his fortune. Let's see what's in store for him. Very interesting. Let's see if his cookie's done. Now that's good to go. It's just starting to turn golden brown around the edges. Now I've got to move quickly. So how does the fortune get into a fortune cookie? Does it grow there? Nope. It's planted, just like this. Fold it over. Pick it up and with the seam facing down, simply grab those two corners and bring them together, just like that. Let's see if the next two are ready. And now I get to pick my own fortune, but I'm not going to peek. Aren't those beautiful? And they're going to taste great too. You know, Chinese cooks are among the most artful and inspired in the world. And in a country larger than Europe, there are many different styles of cooking. But perhaps more than anything else, Chinese cooking is defined by 
the simplicity of a walk. And if you want to fill your walk with lots of fresh flavor, simply remember three things. Prep, fire, and stir. I'm going to stir fry some simple broccoli, but since that wok is so smoking fast, I've got to be ready to go with everything before I even turn it on. I've got to be prepped. Now one of the keys when you're cooking in a wok is to make sure that everything is a uniform size so it cooks evenly and quickly, even the broccoli stems. There's the broccoli. Now for the aromatics. First, garlic. And I'll chop this garlic as finely as I can. That way it'll evenly distribute throughout the broccoli. I'm prepped and ready. Step one is done. Now for step two, fire. I'm actually going to use two different oils. One for high heat, the vegetable oil, and one for flavor, the sesame oil, which would actually burn if I used it all by itself. Now the first thing into the wok, other than the oil, is the ginger. I'm actually flavoring that oil right now, and here comes the garlic. And now I've got just a second or two before that garlic starts to burn. That's why you've got to have everything ready to go, including the broccoli. It's time to season it with some soy sauce and a splash of water. Now's a good time to add the sesame oil. Just a drop or two, it's very strongly flavored. And then on goes the lid. So what I've basically done is created a quick steamer. All that steam, all that water in there is gonna quickly cook that broccoli. Which means I should be thinking about a finishing flavor. This is my Chinese-inspired all-purpose orange dipping sauce. For an all-purpose condiment that you'll be proud to call your own, just remember, balance. Begin with a cup or so of marmalade. Then, balance the bitter-sweet with sour. A half cup or so of rice wine vinegar. Next, Add a few spoonfuls of soya for enhancing saltiness and a few drops of smoky sesame oil for pungent aroma. Then simply whisk until combined into a perfect harmony of balancing tastes. There's something magical about the flavor of broccoli and orange together. Some flavors just go together naturally. Actually, broccoli, orange, and almonds isn't bad either. That's what I call fast food, which is the perfect balance for some slow food. This chicken broth is ready to move on. Flavors of China are a perfect passport to a land of simple cooking and inspirational results. I began my adventure today with a simple chicken broth. I flavored it with aromatic ginger and green onions and then used one of its breasts to make a dumpling stuffing. Now this brings back some memories. You know, when I was a kid, my folks used to take us to this local Chinese restaurant for dim sum. I used to be amazed at how all those different flavors would just fill up our table. Actually, one of my favorites was the shrimp toast. I used to think it was pretty exotic, but now I know better. It's actually pretty simple. Now, when I'm making shrimp toast, I always measure out one cup of shrimp, and then I add a simple egg white. Now for the ginger. Now you can use powdered ginger, but you might want to try freezing some ginger and grating it like this. It's a super simple way to turn it into an aromatic powder. And now for some salt to balance out all that spicy heat. Soy sauce. And now I have a classic Chinese flavor base just standing by aching for even more flavor. 
and just look at all the possibilities. Oyster sauce, black bean sauce, garlic sauce, teriyaki sauce, plum sauce. Which one shall I choose? How do you know which one to choose? Many of the flavors of Chinese cooking are found in simple, easy-to-use condiments. Pick any one and spoon in lots of flavor and authentic regional personality. Oyster sauce is a dark brown Chinese staple traditionally made from cooked oysters, caramel, and soy sauce. It adds unmistakable richness and body to food, but surprisingly, it doesn't taste like oysters. Plum sauce. For Chinese cooks, this is sweet and sour sauce. It's sometimes known as duck sauce, and it really is made from plums. It's also made from vinegar and sugar, and it's found in every single Chinese restaurant. Black bean sauce, mmm, wildly pungent and flavorful. It's made from black beans, garlic, and chilies, and because the black beans are fermented, it adds a rich, round, meaty flavor. The good stuff. Of course, your choice of condiments is entirely based on your taste. So try them all, get to know them, and before you know it, you'll be spooning them on like ketchup and mustard. My favorite is black bean garlic sauce by far. There's my topping. Now all I need is some toast. This stuff is kind of a cross between toast and a cracker, and actually any cracker would work just great for this too. And then all it takes is a nice thin layer of shrimp egg white highly flavored puree. And now for some balancing color. And after just a few minutes in a 350 degree oven, the shrimp toast will be ready to go and you'll be enjoying your own dim sum. Now speaking of dim sum, it's time to get this broth ready for those dumplings. This broth has been gently simmering and aromatizing with ginger and green onions and soy sauce. There's that magical trio again. Good to the last drop. my favorite things to do in life and the kitchen is to try out new flavors. It's a habit I think I've had since I was a little boy sitting in a Chinese restaurant with my parents. And it's one of my dearest wishes for my son, to see the world as full of possibilities. I hope that's his fortune. I know it'll be my good fortune to enjoy this shrimp toast, which was one of my favorite dim sum dishes at that very same Chinese restaurant. And I can't go wrong with orange scented wok seared broccoli. But here's everything I need to make one of my all time favorite Chinese restaurant dishes. I had originally planned to cook these dumplings off in the chicken broth, but then I had an idea. I'm gonna make egg drop soup. Begin of course with a beautiful chicken broth and then simply take a little bit of cornstarch, dissolve it in water. I'll simply stir that together and then slowly pour in the cornstarch. And then just wait a moment or two until the broth thickens ever so slightly. Once it thickens though, turn it off. The next step is to get your eggs ready because all you really have to do to the eggs is just lightly whisk them. And then here comes the fun part. Stir the broth ever so slightly and then start pouring the egg in in a slow, steady stream. And look what happens. Egg drop soup. Very nice. Now you don't normally see dumplings in egg drop soup, but who cares? I'm not trying to win any awards for authenticity here. I just want a dinner that tastes good. 
and I can't think of anything better to top this off with than some sliced green onion. I can't resist. I gotta try this right now. Boy, does that bring back memories. That tastes amazing. The ginger really comes out nicely. You know, whether you're in China or your home, nothing beats the simple satisfaction of creating a meal for your family and friends, especially if you stir in a little dose of ancient Chinese wisdom. Life is at its best when it's balanced. See this right here? Crack that open, there's something inside for you. It says you will find adventure in the kitchen and in life. It's a pretty good fortune, Gabe. Squeeze your uh, chopsticks and then a piece of broccoli. There you go. Wow. Can you get your dumpling out? That's great. <laughs> now you can do one. You can do one. Okay. Mine says variety is the spice of life and the key to life. Mine's a secret. Well, you know what? That makes you the yin and me the yang. <laughs>